work because you get zero on the bottom, and that's bad news for us. So the limit as x approaches to from the left of f of x. Well, it looks like we're getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. So what are we going to put here? Positive infinity. Positive infinity. And then approaching from the right, the limit as x approaches to from the right of f of x, what are we going to put here? It's going to be negative infinity because we're getting more and more and more negative as we get closer and closer to 2. The limit as x approaches 2 of f of x does not exist since we're increasing or decreasing without bound. More generally, if I didn't give you a calculator, what we could think about, let's, let's come at it from the right. So I'm plugging in something very close to 2 from the right-hand side. So if I plug in something very close to 2, I get negative 2 over uh, a bit more than 2 squared minus 4. So that's negative 2 over uh, slightly more than 4, greater than 4, minus 4. So if I take something slightly bigger than 4 and subtract 4, very small number, positive, tiny. And negative 2 over positive, tiny, no, negative. negative. Huge. Negative divided by positive is a negative. And then big number. And I could do a similar thing from the left, except since I'm a bit less than 4, it would be a negative tiny number. And so negative t a negative 2 divided by a negative tiny number is going to be a positive huge number which will be, uh, which will let it, uh, the limit go to positive infinity. So that's what we're going to talk about. We're not only going to talk about limits uh, that we look at where the answer uh, goes towards infinity, but we're also going to look at limits as x approaches infinity, which you learned in Algebra 2 or pre-calc as end behavior. So that's what we're going to talk about. And we're going to use it to talk about graphs. Increasing or decreasing without bounds called infinite limit. Uh, the limit doesn't exist because I'm bounded. We already know that. OK. Let's see. What do we want to do? Uh, we want to talk about vertical asymptotes first. So we're not going to do all vertical asymptotes here. Uh, where's vertical asymptote? Four. Four. Thank you. X equals four. Okay. And what this is going to let us do is right now we have we know that we have a vertical asymptote at four. One, two, three, and four. So we have a vertical asymptote there. Uh, what this lets us do is we're going to be able to see uh, what the behavior is around 4, and thus let us get a very quick uh, visual of what's happening. So we want to figure out the limit as x approaches 4 from the left, and also the limit as x approaches 4 from the right. So take a minute to think about that. 
that's what causes uh, this idea of the function increasing and getting larger and larger and larger, or getting more and more and more negative. That type of behavior is what gives us an asymptote. And algebraically, it's the bottom being 0. So from the left, we have a positive 3. And then we have, uh, if we're coming from the left and we subtract 4, then is our number here going to be a positive or a negative on the bottom? It's going to be a negative, really tiny number, so negative infinity. And then from the right, when we subtract 4, is that going to make this number on the bottom positive or negative? It's going to be positive, so this is going to go to positive infinity. So that tells me from the right, we should be coming from positive infinity, like this. And the graph's going to look like that. Uh, we're going to have an, uh, this is going to have a horizontal asymptote at zero, which I'll talk about in just a minute. But then from the left, we're coming at it approaching negative infinity. So the reason we talk about uh, going to positive or negative infinity here is because that lets us get a visual of what this graph looks like very quickly. So let's do another one of these, and then I'll see if we have questions. So the vertical asymptote here. Uh, let's do let's do this one actually. Change my mind. We're doing this one. Where's the problem? Where can I not plug in for x? Negative two. X equals negative two. So negative two is our vertical asymptote. So we need to determine. What's the limit as x approaches negative 2 coming from the left side and from the right side? Again, we'll talk about it in a minute that we'll have a horizontal asymptote at 0. But I'll just tell you that that happens for now. If you're trying to plug in some really tiny decimal, I'd advise against that because just be thinking about numbers really close to whatever number we're talking about. Uh, because really, we're talking about how big or small is the number, and is it going to be positive or negative? That's, those are the things that we want to keep track of. What do we get here? We get what? Oh, wait. Never mind. There's a negative on top here. This is negative infinity. What about over here? Still negative infinity. Why does that happen? Because no matter what I put down here, the bottom of this will always be positive, except the negative 2 where it's 0, and that's the problem. But the bottom cannot be negative, because once I square it, even if it's a negative beforehand, once I square it, it becomes positive. That's the type of general behavior you want to be thinking about instead of thinking about really small decimals. I'm going to get something really close to 0 when I add 2. Then when I square it, it's going to end up being positive. Since we have a negative on top divided by that positive, then that's going to be negative infinity. So that means from both directions, from both the left and from the right, we're approaching negative infinity. So you can see how this can give you a very quick visual of what these different graphs are going to look like. Now, we'll have some more complications in just a minute, but this can help us uh, generally talk about the, this behavior and these types of graphs uh, very quickly and easily here. Where did I put the note? 
Yes. Right here. Vertical asymptotes are anywhere where the bottom of the function is 0. Anywhere where the bottom is 0. Or more specifically, when the denominator is 0 and the numerator is not. We'll talk about what happens when both are 0 which you've actually seen, because there's what, it's what we lot, spend a lot of time talking about limits with. First one, we have negative 6 over 5 times x minus 1. So we're talking about where does 5 times x minus 1 equal 0. So where does the bottom thing equal 0? And that's at x equals 1. So x equals 1 is our vertical asymptote. Next one. We're looking at where x squared minus 1 equals 0. And double checking that x squared plus 1 doesn't equal 0 anywhere. We want to check if the top is 0. Is negative 6 0? No, it's not. So top is not going to be 0. Can x squared plus 1 be 0? No, because no matter what number I plug in, I can never get take a number, square it, and get out a negative. So when I add 1, it's going to be above 0. Not on the graph. <laughs> I is not on the graph. We're not in the complex plane. x squared minus 1 equals 0. Well, where is it? So there are two of them here. x equals what? Plus or minus 1, which I'll write out separately so that we can easily see that there are two different vertical asymptotes. Cotangent. If we want to keep in the pattern of thinking about where uh, the bottom is 0, we can put something on the bottom and say that this is the same as 1 over tangent, if you prefer thinking about it that way. And so that means we want to know uh, where tangent of x is 0. Pi is 1, so is 0. So 2 pi, 3 pi, and so on. So each pi at every pi we have a vertical asymptote for cotangent. Another way you can think of it, if you prefer, is that this is the same as uh, cosine of x over sine of x. So if you, it's easier for you to think about where sine is 0. You can do it that way, too. It's at the same places. So that's the idea of the vertical asymptotes. Denominator is 0, numerator isn't. And we so we are going to pit uh, different functions against each other uh, and see uh, which one gets grows faster. All right. So we'll start with. Um, We'll start with some easy ones. x versus x squared. If I get bigger and bigger and bigger, which one grows faster and faster? x squared is going to be our winner. 
So x squared wins. How about, uh, OK, x squared was the winner. So let's, uh, let's put it against another bit of competition. Still x squared, right? Uh, loser's bracket. X wins. Because if I take square root of a number, that's going to grow a lot slower. If I have, um, if I have a, one, once I get 100 for x, I have 100. For square root of x, I'm down to 10. So this grows a whole lot faster than square root of x. Versus if I take 100 and square it, then I'm at 10,000 already. And so uh, that grows a lot faster. And uh, you can think about even putting uh, much bigger numbers than 100 in to think about uh, whether uh, something wins. So. That's no fun. Hands up for x squared. Hands up for 2 to the x. Correct, 2 to the x wins. <laughs> 2 to the x grows a whole lot faster. If I put in, uh, if I put in 2 to the x here, uh, let's take even a, even a small number like 30, OK? If I have, if I have 30, I take 30 squared, I get 900. If I take 2 to the 30th, that's multiplying 2 30 times. So 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, all the way 30 times. And by that point, uh, it's already, 2 to the 30th has already crossed a million. It's pretty close to a million. It's a million something. But much bigger than 900. And it's going to keep growing faster and faster and faster. And so 2 to the x is going to win over x squared. OK, well, let's give it a bit of a handicap then. to the 100th. Now we're saying think about the long term. Yes. Long term. We're going to infinity, okay. which is much bigger than 30. This is where the calculator helps you less, because by the time you get to numbers that will actually be useful to compare, uh, your calculator is already telling you, please no, <laughs> overflow error. <laughs> At first, 
x to the 100th comes up pretty strong. Because let's say I plug in 100. Because then I have, if I plug in 100, I have 2 to the 100th versus 100 to the 100th. And that's pretty strong. But let's say I plug in a million. Then I take a million to the 100th, which is pretty big. But then I have 2 to the millionth, which if you think about how quick 2 to the 30th got to a million, think about how quickly, how big 2 to the millionth is going to be. Your calculator is not going to tell you. Calculator is not going to tell you. So you'll start to see, uh, you'll start to see some of these uh, ideas of uh, uh, which thing grows faster, because uh, we're going to start to look at the limit as x approaches infinity, because this is going to help us see. Let's say that I had x squared over 2 to the x. And I wanted to know the limit as x approaches infinity. Which one wins, top or bottom? Bottom wins, right? So that means as I get bigger and bigger, this gets a whole lot bigger than this. So what's the limit? So if, I'm getting, if this number starts getting smaller and smaller, that means we're getting closer and closer and closer to zero. So our limit as x approaches infinity here is zero. So we want to think about, this is where we get to end behavior, thinking about whether uh, the function increases or decreases without bound, or uh, whether we get, uh, here's, here's one more to think about. <laughs> 